Moving to a cloud-based system can be very daunting. And one of the biggest concerns people have is whether or not they're going to be on this perpetual treadmill of updates and upgrades, each of which may necessitate retraining or a change to their workflow. Well, I'm about to sit down with someone who's going to give me the inside scoop on what it has been like for their practice to move to a cloud-based system. Hello and welcome to Healthcare IT Today, where we explore the latest trends and interesting technologies from the world of health IT. I'm Colin Hung and I'm about to sit down with Rich Eels. He's the Vice President of Operations Administration at United Digestive. I'm going to ask Rich about his journey with his innovation partner, eClinical Works. I'm specifically going to ask him about what it's like to get all those updates and whether or not he feels he's on a treadmill. I can't wait to hear his answers. Let's get to it. Richard, welcome back to the program. Absolutely, thanks for having me. It's been a while since we last spoke, so I'm glad you're back. I'm glad we have this opportunity to come back together. Certainly, yeah, it's a lot is changing in the healthcare landscape and it's always fun to reconnect and chat about it. Now, for those that, just in case, have not watched our prior video together, Richard, can you give me a quick overview of your role and your organization? Yeah, certainly. Uh, my name is Rich Eels. I'm the VP of Innovation and Integration for United Digestive. Uh, it's a healthcare practice based in the Southeast US mainly, uh, Georgia, Florida, and the Carolinas. Um, over 80 locations, 200 providers, and uh, well over uh, 1,000 team members every day coming in taking care of our patients. I, you know, I, I always marveled that you have 200 practitioners in your, in your facilities. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun and a lot of opportunity to, to grow and, and serve our patients. So this year I wanted to sit down and, and chat with you a little bit about the evolution that you've gone through and the growth you've had with eClinical Works. Um, you know, certainly here at the conference we've been hearing a lot about the innovations that they're bringing forward. Tell me a little bit more about some of the innovations that you've adopted over the years that you've been working with them. Yeah, certainly. We went live in 2020. Uh, we're on their cloud-based product that's fully in the Azure cloud. Um, we've really enjoyed sort of the pace of upgrades that they've done. Uh, every year there's new features coming out that are meaningful and actually impact our patients in a positive way and our providers' lives getting a little easier each time too. Um, last year uh, there was a lot of hype and excitement about what AI could do and it's nice to see it really coming into fruition this year um, when eClinical is actually delivering on those AI products. And, and let's talk about a couple aspects I want to unpack there. First of all, let's talk just a little bit about the AI stuff. What are some of the exciting things that you're seeing that you hope to, to bring or have brought into your practice? Yeah, I think uh, you know a lot of it's around patient access. So eClinical has been at the forefront of making sure that patients can book their own appointments online and have access to the schedules. Very similar to how they make a restaurant reservation, right? They can pick a time and a place that's convenient for them. And we've embraced that since the beginning. Um, more recently, they've been really focused on really how do you drive density in your schedules, right? Mm -hmm. Our providers work hard every day, and the last thing they want to do is sit there idle in the clinic or in the procedure rooms. So eClinicals came out with some AI around cancellations. And when a patient cancels, it automatically offers to patients that are on the same provider at the same location just further in the future, they offer that closer slot to them. So once again, really patient forward in the sense that if a patient wants to be seen earlier, they get that opportunity. And using AI to do that, where a staff member doesn't have to find the canceled slot and then go and call people on a wait list or an ASAP list and try and get them in earlier, doing all of that through technology on the Helo platform is really done in a graceful way. So we're excited about that change. Um, there's obviously lots of things going on with ambient listening, with Sono, AI, and a couple other of their products uh, that are certainly going to be exciting as those products become more and more mature. Uh, but we're just uh, really trying to pay attention to what's going on and, and looking for the next thing to chase. Now, you mentioned the, the pace of innovation. And I know one of the concerns that certainly I hear sometimes when people are thinking about moving to a cloud-based system or have moved to a cloud system is that they're worried about the pace of change, that, that they're just going to be updating constantly. And with every update, there's going to be a change in training and workflows. And, and they're worried that that is going to be a little bit overwhelming for them, even though they might be relieved of the burden of having to maintain their own servers and things like that. Can you talk to me a little bit about the pace of change that you've experienced with eClinical Works? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, with any software as a product or as a service, you have those sort of anxiety points 
Um, that's certainly normal. We haven't really seen a lot of uh, workflow impacting changes in those weekly or monthly updates, however often they happen to come out. For the most part, the core workflows are really the same that they've been for years. Um, it's just finding ways to enhance them to make it a little faster. I think one of the things eClinical is really well known for is there's seven or eight or nine or 10 different ways to all accomplish the same thing. Really trying to meet the provider or our team members where they are uh, and where you are in a different screen, there might be a faster way to pop over. Uh, sometimes that's a double-edged sword because there's too many ways to do it and you really want to have some consistency. But it certainly uh, allows those upgrades to be less impactful to user workflow or taking an upgrade that you know, impacts the way that we're able to serve our patients. Those types of things we've seen are pretty minimal. Uh, it's typically new features that are being added in and eClinical balances that in a nice way of making sure those step upgrades don't impact you uh, by doing too many changes all in the same upgrade. And it sounds like you're able to digest these upgrades at your own pace too. You don't have to take them all at one time, as you were saying. You can kind of take the ones that make the most sense for you and leave the ones that, that don't make any sense for, for you at the, at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. Security patches, those types of things come automatically, but any new features are really offered in a way that allow you to opt into them typically with a security setting or setting up a new configuration of that feature. So it certainly isn't forced on you. You don't have to do online scheduling uh, or you don't have to do AI. You can pick which parts of the AI you want to turn on and turn off. We clearly want to take the time to get the security settings right and make sure we understand how that impacts the patient experience and our provider and team members roles as well. So it allows you to digest those and do it in an environment uh, at your own pace. And again, going back to something you said right off the top, you mentioned that you know moving to the cloud and moving onto the Azure platform. That sounded like it was very important to you. Why was it important for you know you as a as a leader at the organization to know that they had moved to a sort of a nice, secure public cloud? Yeah, so absolutely. Microsoft, you know, is uh, one of the leaders in cloud technology. So it's nice to know that you're with a, a global leader in that space. Security is fantastic. Also the scalability. As our organization continues to grow and find new practices to join, we want to make sure that our products are able to go fast and keep up with the load of additional users on them. So having the right tech stack on your key products, things like eClinical with your EHR, is really important because it enables them to move faster and scale quicker. So we've been really enjoying the Azure environment where eClinical is able to give us those additional resources as we need so that they grow alongside us instead of uh, it being a little bit of a friction point there. Now, as you look down the road, specifically for eClinical Works, I know we've talked a lot about AI, but are there any other technologies or any other enhancements that you're seeing coming down the pipeline that's got you excited? Yeah, I mean, they continue to innovate on sort of their patient access programs. Um, so they're adding some new features that allow our patients to book their own appointments, but then also opt into those earlier opportunities, so that's coming soon, and we're excited about that. Um, uh, but uh, I think those, those are the main items. And in general, just outside of, of uh, eClinical Works, are there any technologies or process improvements that you're working on that you're excited about at your organization? Yeah, absolutely. At United Digestive, we've adopted the phrase innovation and practice. It's really a continuous improvement mindset. Mm -hmm. So we continue to challenge ourselves every single day on what's the next thing we can go and improve. And whether that's a patient access or the way that you interact with our call center or the way that we send out our bills to make sure that they're consolidated and patient friendly, those types of opportunities. But every day we ask ourselves, are we doing this the best way that we can? Mm -hmm. And recently we've been challenging ourselves, what is the world-class or best benchmark in the industry? And why is that the benchmark? Uh, just because it's the high watermark doesn't mean that you should stop. So we, as an organization, we've really adopted that continuous improvement uh, innovation and practice is the way we've coined it, um, just to really go chase the next thing and continue to make it a great experience, not only for our team members and our providers, but also our patients. Well, Rich, you shared a lot of great information with us today. What's the website where people can go and learn more about your organization? Yeah, always happy to have uh, new patients. It's unitediggestive.com, uh, and we're serving uh, gastroenterology needs in the Southern United States. Awesome. Rich, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for coming back onto the program. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hey, I want to thank Rich for coming on camera with me and sharing his innovation journey with their partner, eClinical Works. I certainly found it very fascinating, all the different things that they've been able to do with a cloud-based system in their practice. 
And I was really appreciative of the story he told about how it is his choice and his practice's choice as to what modules from eClinical Works that they want to implement. They are not on a treadmill. And hey, if you enjoyed this interview as much as I did, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com where you can find more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung. Thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next video.